Studying medicine requires a ton of rote memorization, from difficult names of drugs and their unique properties to complicated biochemical pathways. There's a lot of stuff to memorize. For years, the only way to do this was to read the stuff multiple times and use some mnemonics here and there. But services like Sketchy and Pixarize changed the game completely. They popularized the concept of visual mnemonics by using vivid images humor, puns and other very important stuff in their videos, they made all the medical jargon very easy to digest. I can't even imagine the level of genius the creators of these services were. But that was many years ago. Today, with the use of AI, we can generate an image of anything we can possibly imagine. And that got me thinking, what if we try to create visual mnemonics like Sketchy and Pixarize for every single thing we find hard to memorize? How easy or difficult will it be? Will the AI images be as efficient? Let's go to ChatGPT first and ask it for a detailed prompt that will make an AI agent act as Sketchy and make images from any medical facts we provide. Now that we have the prompt, let's give it a try. I want to use it on my red flagged cards from Anki. Let's start with this simple fact. In viral hepatitis, ALT is greater than AST. I'm using Gemini for image generation as it is faster and better in generating images than ChatGPT. And here's the image. Interesting. This has both alcohol and virus in the background and ALT is larger. This could have worked if there was just virus in the background and not alcohol. This means it somehow doesn't get the logic behind this fact. Let's edit the prompt again so that first we get an explanation of the image it's going to generate and the symbols and logic that's going to be used. And after my approval, I want the image to be generated. And here's the image. It's a bit confusing because both ALT and AST start with A. This might have worked if ALT and AST had not been represented with the same symbols. Let's try conveying that. Okay, V labeled cloud, L shaped mountain and T labeled hill make no sense at all. After that, I edited the prompt so the explanations are brief so that I actually want to read them and tried generating again. This is what I got. No representation of virus and ALT and AST are simply labeled without any symbols. Something needs to be changed. Now for the next attempt, I edited the prompt so that when I paste the contents of my card, it first explains it like I'm 5 years old and then convert the explanation into an image. Okay, this is actually good. The only complaint is that the bugs should have looked like viruses. I'll ask it to change that. Hmm, I think we are onto something. Here's the liver and the virus around it, representing viral hepatitis and ALT is bigger than AST. This can actually work. Let's now try for alcoholic hepatitis in which AST is more than ALT. Okay, this will work I guess. There's alcohol and a thin ALT person. No clear representation of AST. But I think this much will be enough to remember that in alcoholic hepatitis, ALT is lesser than AST. I then tried this prompt with some other cards, but the results were very inconsistent. For some stuff, the mnemonics were really good, while for others, they just didn't work. After a lot of trial and error, finally, I think I have something. Let's try it with the earlier example. In viral hepatitis, ALT is more than AST. And this is the image. Here's the virus. This is the larger ALT tower and the smaller AST astronaut. Now for alcoholic hepatitis, the larger AST astronaut and smaller ALT tower and this bottle representing alcoholic hepatitis. Pretty impressive. I wanted to try it with some more cards. So I got this table of thyroid eye signs to see how the prompt performs. And here are the results. First is Joffroy sign, which is lack of wrinkles on forehead on upward gaze. J for Joffroy is represented by J for Joker, which is looking up and its forehead doesn't have any wrinkles. Then Gifford sign, which is difficulty in inversion of upper eyelid. Here's a gift box for Gifford and the upper eyelid of this eye is stuck because of this glue, hence preventing eversion of the eyelid. 
Stellwag sign is infrequent blinking. Stellwag is represented by a star wagon, but its curtains are mostly closed, meaning infrequent blinking. Coming to Enroth sign, which is fullness of eyelids, here's an enroll sign and the envelopes attached to it are bulging and overstuffed, showing fullness of eyelids. I think these are actually pretty good. At least compared to the initial images, this is a really big improvement. So yeah, I hope you try it. I'll put the final prompt in the description and let me know if this works for you.